Ready? All right. And welcome to Wednesday night uh, Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Um, if you missed us live, that's because there's no spectrum internet out here from the storm. Uh, we did get electricity, praise the Lord, so we can have church. We have no spectrum to be able to stream it live. So uh, we are going to record it and post it. So if you're watching it, it's been posted. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. All right. Um, we, we were been ministry on for several weeks on reclaiming the blessing through our words. Amen. And uh, we kind of we wrapped that, but I'm going to segue into it. All right. And, um, you know, we talked about what is your divine apparatus? Anybody know what your divine apparatus is? Your mouth. Amen. Your words. Your words have authority and your words have power. Your words are, are, have the ability to create. The life and death is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen? So let's move on now, not really moving away from this as a, as a pure, like a completely different stream. Let's, let's come off of here. I, did. <laughs> I thought that's what that was. John, enjoy that. I mean, what, what, what can I say? You were right. I thought about it as soon as I said it, too. I just, yeah, just thought maybe nobody would pick up on that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we're going to pick up this stream. When we have revelation and we get faith on something, amen, it is not a one-time event. In other words, you don't get revelation about something. That's it forever. You have to maintain it. Said so you have to maintain it because it can slip away from you. Amen. So it's not like, oh man, I got faith to be healed and I got healed. And then six months, six years later, whatever, something else comes along and you're, you're not doing what you did to get the faith in the first place. You got lazy. Amen. And so instead of maintaining, you let it slip away. And we'll cover some scriptures that will support that. Amen. Uh, like our very first one over in Hebrews chapter 2. Go there if you will. Hebrews the second chapter. Um, a lot of people believe, and, and it actually logically makes sense, that Hebrews was an addendum to Galatians um, with the title to the Hebrews. Okay, and um, so that, that's one belief, you know, theory about why it's just called Hebrews or to the Hebrews, that it was in a denim. And it also explains the how large a letter I write, the letter to the Galatians and then the book of Hebrews or the letter to Hebrews, a denim to it. So that is a, we have no way to prove in that. Okay, I do know Paul was not using a tablet per letter because he had alpha whatever that oriental eye disease is, okay? Um, Paul writes here, I believe Paul, writes here in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Amen? Slip is coming from a Greek word I don't even, I, I tried five, six times a day to try to get this thing right. Par our heroio. Parahoroyo. That's as close as I can get. Okay? Um, and it means to carelessly pass, to miss, to let slip. Okay? So you're in a faith church. You hear this, you know, you, you get a hold of something at some point in time in your life, and you believe you receive it and get it, and then you get just flat out lazy and don't really stay in the word about things. You don't stay in the word about faith. don't stay in the word about healing. And it slips away. <clears throat> And then when, it, then when something comes up and you're not getting it because you don't have that level of faith, faith level, then you're like, oh, man, man, why is it working? Now, um, let's look at this. Let's think of this way. Now, um, I used to be a weightlifter. My, now, back in my day, we, 
we didn't have big body, upper body, skinny legs. That was just not allowed. You, know, you see the guys? They come up, they got shorts on, they got their, they got their muscle shirt on, and then they got, they got broad chest, they got biceps, and you look down there, they got toothpicks hanging out the shorts. Well, we know where you spend all your time. Okay? You do all your work on your upper body. We did that. They had, um, had this kind of a uh, thought along what they call power lift, which was bench, squats, and deadlifts. Okay? And, you know, m mine combined was 1,160. Okay? I could, now, we're not talking about um, one little rep, and you jump out going, whoa, look what I did. That's not how we lifted weights. Now, I would squat 400 pounds 15 times. Okay? Not throughout a whole day. That was one set. That was my max set. Okay? So I had tree trunks. Okay? Um, I, I could deadlift 400 about 8 to 10 times. And then I could bench 360 at the, at the top of a pyramid workout. Warmed up with 185 and kept going up in, in reps of six to eight till I got to 360 to max. And then come backwards. Okay? So I know you may not look at me now and go, wow. Back then I was, I was buff. Okay? And I, I live in the dream that one of these days <laughs> we can go back there again. And then I go look at that weight, and I go, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> it just ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm like, God, what's in this grocery bag? Two loaves of bread? <laughs> okay, you get it? I mean, we, we used to have, because I was lifting weights like that, and, you know, you've seen the, the round trash cans that roll and stuff, you know, the big rubber made ones. We would fill those up with chicken at Parker's and put them in, that's, they cut them up and put them in there and have them in the cooler. You can't even imagine what that weighed. I used to pick those up and dump them in the sink by, my, by myself. Okay? Now, I'm not saying they try to brag about how big I was, how buff I was, but now when I go to move something, to something, I'm like, but I used to be able to, oh my God, what is, well, to get back to where that is, I got to do what I did before. I was working out six days a week over an hour and a half, two hours a day. Okay? Like a crazy man. I would just go in there and work out and work, work out and work out and work out six days a week, three days up or three days lower. And I didn't go light heavy. Never. It was always up. It was always heavy. That's called young and dumb. Okay? And when I, I look at myself now, I'm thinking, I need to get in shape. And then I remember what it took. I'm like, let's go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> I need a blizzard. You know, I'm feeling down thinking about this. I need a blizzard. I'm going to do some four-ounce curls. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> I don't have right now I'm trying to convince myself to get there the want to to go through again what it took to get where I was and that's a natural th that's a natural analogy however there are people who do the same thing spiritually they spent time in the word they confessed the word they meditated in the word they prayed in tongues they listened to tapes they they just kept doing 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 they went to meetings they did everything they had to get to that place to be able to get what they needed from god and they developed spiritual muscles as it were now at some point in time i stopped doing all that what happened was i was playing ball trying to stretch out a hit uh, an infield to us infield single, and pulled a hamstring. Bad. I was on crutches for a few weeks. And, um, I mean, I, put, I felt it when it went. When I stretched to hit first, well, actually, I did beat it out as I went to the ground. My foot hit the bag, and I just kept going right straight to the ground because I felt it pop when I was going to the bag, right there at the last. When I stretched, I felt it. Ooh. 
I never went back in the gym like that again. I've worked out some since then. Get to, oh, I don't need to do all that anyway. Just enough. Just enough to get by. Well, then I can't do what I could do when I had done more than enough to get, than get by. I had done enough to be a beast. Are y'all with me here? Okay. I didn't have this. This was out here. This was, okay. You know, you've done lots of disease. Then locked over your belt, chest and drawer disease, chest and dropped into your drawers, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> heard all those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you young folk may not have heard of those. Well, that's, uh, anyway. You've heard of it. You've experienced it. Yeah. Okay. This Hebrews tells us <coughs> that we're not to let the things we learn slip. Don't let your faith slip. Don't let it get away from you. And listen, I didn't go from 360 beast to grocery bag with two loaves of bread in a week. It just kind of, you know, stayed, you know, just slowly, not as whatever, but you're still, you know, you're still kind of buff, dude, okay? All right, you, you know, you're all right. And it took time of not maintaining to eventually get where I'm, I'm as bad or worse than I was when I first started. Physically, had lift, lifting weights and stuff. And we can do the same thing spiritually. We have experienced that zenith of full of faith in the Holy Ghost, turned on to Jesus, got the, I mean, you just full of it, faith. I mean, you can, that can slip, 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 slip. And then when it comes time to pray, you're like, well, Lord, if it be thy will. Why well, you haven't seen any results lately? Why well, haven't you been seeing any results? Because you didn't maintain. Okay? So, does all that make sense? All right. So what we got to do? <coughs> well, he said give more earnest heed. When I go to that faith church, I've heard Mark 11, 23 and 24 thousands of times. I've heard say, speak the word, speak the word. And you can get to the point that you're so familiar with what we say that you're not listening. Amen. You're not listening. Yeah, I've heard that. I listen to Brother Hagin's, you know, I, I, I uh, every night turn on my... Um, iPod. I've got all of Brother Hagin's old tape series on my iPod. And they play them. I'll, I'll find one of the series and plays all night. All night long. All night long. And I'll hear things that I know I've heard before, but I wasn't listening. And I'm going, man, yeah, I forgot about that. So keep rehearsing. Keep stirring up, okay? So you have to not let them slip. And notice he said this. He would not admonish us, are you ready for this? To not let them slip if it wasn't a real possibility or likelihood, okay? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip. Amen? Peter says over in First Peter, I mean 2 Peter chapter 1, look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Bring your Bibles, bring you a pen, mark in your Bible. Amen? Underline stuff. Take some notes. Well, I've heard it before. Yeah, I know. I said, yeah, I know. Dad Hagen used to teach. And he started telling the story, and you could, you could have stood up and told it for him, honestly, because you've heard it so many times, except this time he adds something to it he left out or didn't share the last time because it wasn't relevant to the point he was trying to make. And all of a sudden, there's another piece of a puzzle that you didn't get. 
And if you hadn't been listening, you've just been kind of going, ah, I've heard that before. Oh, yeah, that's a great story. I love that story. But you weren't really listening. He, he says that. He, he used to say, he said, look, um, I don't always tell everything every time. He said, there's pieces that I, I'd leave out because they're not relevant. Other times I'll, I'll bring all of that, to, I'll bring more of it to the table. Maybe not even shared it before because it's relevant to how, what I'm sharing right now. In the same story. And it brings revelation you didn't, didn't get before because it wasn't told. And then revelation comes now because you're listening. But if you're over there on, you know, La La Land, well, he said, we'll tell that story about the, and he's going to tell a story about the um, woman who was real overweight and had a big tumor, and uh, he punched her in the stomach, and yeah, I know that story. You know, she's coming down the aisle, and the Lord says, punch her in the stomach as hard as you can when she gets up here. He does. Her husband's behind her. He's not even saved. He goes, you G-D-S-O-B, take, and he says it. Get your hands off my wife. Except he looks down at the floor, and it's completely, it was a tumor. And it had gone. Okay. Yeah, I know the story. I know the story. But then he turns right around, and in that, he tells something completely beyond what you've heard before, and it brings a whole other faith lesson. A whole other lesson on obedience to God. Okay? So this is why when we come to church, or we're listening to a tape, or we're reading the Bible, yeah, I know what that says. Are you here? How many have read the Bible like that? Yeah, I know what that says. But why don't you let the teacher, when you're reading the Word, Highlight something to you. Amen. Buddy Harris, you ever, ever seen the book by Buddy Harris, Hear, See, and Do? It's a really good book. Now I got the book. He's reading the Bible, and he came up with that scripture What you've seen in me, I mean, what you've seen and heard in me, do. He said he was just reading, he was, he was reading devotionally or whatever. And he said, when he got there in that verse, those three words just lit up. He's read them before. I said, he read them before <coughs> numerous times, but they lit up. Amen. And the Lord spoke to him about what you've heard and what you've seen, now go do. And it came, became a whole message that he taught. And then, of course, the book came out of that. Okay. Had he just kind of go, oh, yeah, I was going to have some he would have missed the opportunity for the teacher to speak to him and help highlight something that reinforced things he, he had learned and, and gained faith about and gained understanding about. He would have missed that moment. Okay? So we have to maintain our faith by staying in the Word. Can't get around it. Can't, you can't circumvent that process. Y'all hear you going home. Um. 2 Peter 1, 12 and 13 states, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in this present truth. Yea, I think it meet or profitable or necessary, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Of what? The things that they know. The things they already know. I'll be honest with you. Too many people are trying to come up with a fresh new word that nobody's ever heard so they can be the hot commodity on the marketing scene of the Christian church. They forget things like this. I think it's necessary to put you in remembrance. Amen? I said amen. Um, it's important that we stay reminded. Now, some people take Hebrews, you know, they move on from, you know, the foundational doctrines of Christ and move on. It doesn't mean, yeah, it doesn't mean that you don't continue to study things. Because honestly, what will happen is 
you go into deeper things with the same thing. Dick sent a really cool picture today um, out on Facebook. It was five megabyte of data on punch cards. You know, I mean, and it literally, it was like this tall, like this wide, and the woman standing there picking up stacks and feed them into the, the card reader. Of course, I posted like, can you imagine? Or envision, I think I used the word. Somebody running into that stack of cards. Was it 60,000 something cards? Yeah, <laughs> over 62,000 cards. And if you got them out of order, guess what you would have to do? Sit there and go through and sort every. Now they had do they did have machine sorters. I don't know if they had them that far back. Okay, you know, if the cards were numbered, you could run through there, and what it would do, it would, it would sort them, and you had to take all those out, and then resort them, and all this kind of stuff, and until so you got them all in the correct sequential order. Whew. That's scary. Amen. Second Peter three one and two. This is the second epistle, beloved, I write unto you, in both which I, listen, in which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the, of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. What's he doing? Well, I'm going to stir you up with the things we already, I've already told you. I've talked to you about it. We've ministered to you about it. Other, other apostles, other ministers in the, in the kingdom have ministered to you about it. But here I am, and I'm going to remind you. See, we get too busy looking for the latest, newest, greatest, heavy revy. Because it tickles our ears. It excites us. I'm under grace, <clears throat> and I don't have to do anything. I'm going to prosper and be healed and blessed no matter what, because I'm under grace. <clears throat> and everybody runs off like a crazy animal after that. And they'll leave everything else behind to run after some new extreme doctrine. Amen. Instead of doing what you always have to, we have to be Bereans. Bill can find that verse. In reference to the Bereans, the word said this. Now, the Berea was a, was a place that, you know, they administered. And they had gone from Thessalonica down to Berea. And this is what they said. Um, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica. In that, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this a little bit, they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things be so or not. That's a slight paraphrase to it. Okay. They were excited about the thing. That, okay. These are more noble than those, that, more noble than those in the death of the Micah. They received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Not a bad paraphrase, was it? It's <laughs> almost spot on. Okay. What did they do? They were excited about this, this word they were teaching them, but then they went back to the things they knew, and they proved it out. They, and they didn't forget the things they knew. They proved it out with the thing they knew, the things they knew. That's important. It's so important. You know, oh, that's a good word. Now let's see if it's really Bible. Yep. Now I like that. That sounds great. Is it in here? Can it be proven out of here? Or is that just giving me some itching ears? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm heaping under myself teachers having itching ears. What's going to happen when you do that? You'll get flaky. 
Now, listen, we had a lot of good things happen in the charismatic renewal, and we also had some flaky things happen. Hello? We don't need pastors. We need house churches. I'll give rid of that goobity gawk. You know? You don't have, a, you know, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap unto themselves teachers, having itching ears. And let's take, take the word lust and use the Greek definition for it, because it, it can mean inordinate or it can mean good, after their own strong desires. They may not want to have to submit to authority. So their desire is not to submit. So they won't endure sound doctrine because after their own strong desire not to be submitted, they heap to themselves teachers having any inch years. They'll find somebody that'll tell them what they want to hear. Okay? They'll call dial a prophet. What's the word? Okay? How about this one? I mean, this, this got, you know, Grace got so crazy at one time point that people were posting stuff on Facebook like this, you know? Well, James says this, faith without works is dead being alone. Well, Paul and James were in, disagreed. As a matter of fact, I, I read this out of one, people's, one of these people's comments, comments. Most scholars today believe James shouldn't even be in the Bible. Itching ears. What are they going to do? They're going to find somebody that gives them a narrative they like. Because by eliminating James, they eliminate James, what happens? They do it. The things that James says that tempers the interpretation of what Paul said, okay, they, they're not going to endure the sound doctrine. They're going to find teachers after their own strong desire, and whatever that is, not to submit, not to obey. Okay, I um, back when the the grace kind of stuff really came out kind of super squirrely. Oh, I guess it may be pushing twenty plus years ago. I don't remember. Um, anybody, anybody remember Brother Bill? Greasy Grace, probably around twenty years ago. Yeah, Facebook or you know whatever. Yeah, Facebook. And this one was, I'm under grace. I don't have to give. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to submit. She just posted all that. And, of course, I'm you know, 20 years younger. I'm 45. I'm much more brash than I am now. <laughs> you say, well, you brash right now. You should have seen me then. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Ship your saddle home. That's right. <laughs> I didn't let that go. I said, look. I can give you a New Testament scripture telling you to do every one of the things you said you don't have to do. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, quoted some more stuff. And then they came back with this one. I'm like, wow. I said, the life of God in this is, you know, whatever, da, 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 da. They came back and said, I said, Adam was told not to do things. Do you notice this idiot? Said, uh, idiot. Idiot. Okay. Dumb back in. I mean, dumb butt. You know what they said? Adam and Eve didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. <laughs> Drop the mic. Ain't no need talking to you. Adam and Eve hadn't sinned. They were in that perfect state of harmony with God. And they didn't have the Holy Ghost. God breathed into them spirited into them the breath, the spirit of life. And yeah. And they got some teachers that are teaching that stuff. Heaping unto themselves itching ears. I mean, heaping unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, this is why you need to know the Word. This is why you need to know the Word. And maintain your faith. Don't be as children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. 
whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They'll bring doctrines that sound so good. And let me tell you something. When you get lazy about doing what you're supposed to do, you look for the shortcuts. Hello? You will look for the shortcuts. Because you don't want to do what you got to do to not take the shortcut. Hello? Well, this is strong, but it's true. You can't afford that. You can't afford that. Y'all here, you go home. It's harder the second time than it was the first. Because you've got that mental block now that says, well, you did have it, but you don't anymore. And then you automatically start thinking about what you have to do to get back there and the price you paid. Can I get anything beyond a holy grunt? Okay? Yeah, there you go. Because it's true. And so, if we are going to maintain, you come to Expedition Church, you turn on Kenneth Copeland or whoever on TV, and you're hearing those messages, and Bill Winston, and, you know, some of these people, and just getting all stirred up, and, you know, then you get busy, and instead of listening to Brother Hagen or Brother Copeland or somebody at night, you got the Beach Boys on because you used to like that music. And I, listen, here, here. There is nothing wrong with turning on some, some old music and listening to it occasionally. You go, well, I like, yeah, because I it's this, got my convertible, got the top down. That's a, you know, that's a Temptations, you know, kind of thing. But ha, beach music style, whatever. Okay. But you can't live on that. And then when you got the option to listen to the word or listen to the, you know, um, temptations. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. Now, my ringtone for my wife is my girl. Yeah. <clears throat> for people I don't know, it's Mission Impossible. It really is. And for the kids, it's uh, Hawaii Five O. Okay, but if it's if I don't know you, and you call me, you know, and then I bought, actually thought about putting Darth Vader the Imperial March out there. That if somebody I don't really want to talk to, it comes out and goes, <laughs> dun 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 dun. dun, dun. But then if they ever heard my phone and knew it was them, they would be upset. Anyway. <laughs> but Janie is my girl. And sometimes I'll just sit there and let play. You know. Like, Answer the phone. I'm waiting for it to say, my girl. <laughs> She's on the other end going, are you going to answer the phone? <clears throat> so. Um, Peter goes in the second, uh, second Peter chapter 3 now. It says this, this second epistle I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind. Oh, I already read that, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, by way of remembrance, that you be mindful of the words that were spoken by the holy prophets and by the commandment of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. So Peter is, is determined to stir us up. Can you say amen? amen. So we want to... Um, Maintain our spirit of faith. Now, there are some things you're going to have to do to do that. I can tell you, listen, I've got people I went to high school with, I know from the past. I love them. I'll go hunt class reunions. If they come, like, they'll come to town sometimes for the ACC tournament, I'll go out and go have, you know, one, one time some of, some of the guys that I went to school with were in town and um, we went and bowled together and stuff you know, had, had Starbucks, whatever. 
There's nothing wrong with hanging out with some people you know. But if they become who you hang with all the time, you're going to walk down. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. People walk into a level of darkness to us, almost unbelief now for the things that they did believe because they got to hanging around people who didn't believe any of that. And they weren't light. They weren't light. They got too, got too busy hanging out about who they were and what they used to do. Well, I mean, my nickname in high school was Wild Man. Uh, yeah, Janice, I got it. Because I was crazy. I just did stuff just to be crazy. You know? Just so I could be crazy. Beating my head on walls, beating lockers in. I mean, in football, I would, you know, they, you can't do this stuff anymore. Back then, you could get away with it. I, I had a forearm pad, and I would just beat the daylights out of the guy's head in front of me on the line. We didn't, we didn't lock up shoulder pads. I came across and slammed them against the head just as hard as I could hit him. Matter of fact, I got thrown out of a game one time. Yep. We were losing to North Lenore my last game of my junior year. And um, they were beating us pretty good. It was like a couple minutes game. They just scored again. So I went down the field in the kickoff, and I jumped up in the air, and I took my arm like this. And I'd already been worn one time and slammed the kicker upside the head just as hard as I could hit him. Now, the reason I got spoke to before was I had gotten clipped by a player. I got up and ran and clipped him back. <laughs> I told you I was crazy. <laughs> I got caught. <coughs> so when I, when, I, when I carried the guy outside the head, I got thrown out. Coach called me, oh, thrown out of the game, Eddie Taylor. <laughs> then, he called me, then he started calling me wild man. Anyway. Huh? <laughs> Every once in a while, it gets off the cross. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Do what now? That's right. Slam him upside the head, clip him back, stomp him. Amen. Now, um, in 2 Corinthians, Paul writes to the church at Corinth that says this. Chapter 4, verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I speak, have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. The spirit of faith. Notice how it works. We believe, therefore we speak. And let me say this. If you're not maintaining, you won't be speaking. If you're not maintaining, you won't be speaking. You'll say what you're hanging around. Y'all here? I said, are you all here? I jumped one to one of my points at the end of the lesson, but it still fits. We have to stay under the influence of the word. You cannot spend all your time under the influence of something else. Not necessarily things that are sin, but of something else that, get, that garners so much more of your time that you're not getting enough word to stay under the influence of it. Now, we'll just use, we'll use drinking. If somebody starts drinking, when they quit, what well, starts happening? Over a period of hours, it begins to dissipate to the point they're no longer under the influence of it. If they want to stay in that inebriated state, what they got to do? At least keep drinking some. You know, you start coming, you start kind of sobering up, take back enough to get back drunk. If that's what you want to be, you know. Not saying this is what I do, I don't do. Okay. I did experiment when I was younger, but I got saved. And that's it. Last time. Are you here? Zilch. End the story. 
But if you want, but if you want to stay under the influence of something, and you begin to see that influence waning, you you do it again. You get more. The thing about about the word about spiritual things is, <clears throat> when we digress from spiritual things, our flesh starts taking over. And it's got a big mouth. It speaks loud. It'll speak to us. And it'll begin to govern what we think and tell us, you don't, listen, yeah. <coughs> when you go to church, son, you hear all you need to hear. Matter of fact, you don't even need to go this week. Yeah. Pastor even said, you know, you need to take some time off. The links are calling you. And now, Jerry loves to play golf. Jerry loves to play golf. I think the last time I went out with Jerry was me, Alan, and Jerry. And that's the time I almost took Alan out with the, the cart. I mean, pretty close. That ball was pinging around that golf cart like a, like a ping pong, like a, 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 we call them, pinball machine. And he was behind me. I think he saw his life flash before him. I, the last thing I remember was him diving to the ground outside the cart. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so we have to, if you're going to have the spirit of faith, if you're going to maintain it, you got to stay the influence. Now let me tell you, you cannot come in be a word of faith, charismatic, tongue-talking, Bible-toting, word-confessing, hand-laying-on, demon-casting-out believer. And then go somewhere and stay away from all of that and think it's going to stay like it was. I've seen people go to Rama, come out on fire, love God. I mean, they are, I mean, they are all over it. And I've seen them get away from it, get away from those that they got the spirit of faith from. Spirit of faith is caught. The word of faith is taught. You catch it by being around. You catch the spirit of faith by being around people of faith. Amen. The word of faith, you're taught that. But you catch the spirit of it by being around other believers who are so full of faith, amen. And that spirit's on them. Amen. So it's important to maintain that level of integration with people. And it's, it's so easy. I, I, I am. This, this is, I'm, I'm trying, I try so hard not to be ugly. Or sound ugly, or con condescending, or superior, or whatever. But people still accuse me of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway. <laughs> Even when I try not to, they accuse me of it anyway. So okay, well, and you need wasting my time not trying not to. Okay. Um. It is. Frustrating. And to see people who are so whatever with something and then lose hold on that. I remember, I see, I went through this because when I left Raymond, there was no Raymond Ministerial Association. Their connection to us was come back for alumni week. Woo! I went to a couple. Life got busy. It's hard to make the 1,060, oh, for Greenville, 1,083 miles to Tulsa. At 55 miles an hour back then, it took you 24 hours to get there. Yeah, in the demon car. The gremlin, the AMC gremlin. Demon car, demon car. Went to a couple, oh, man, they were good. My first one back, 1982, the guest lineup for the alumni week was T.L. Osborne, Kenneth Copeland, 
um, Brother Hagen, Pastor Hagen. I'm trying to remember who else spoke that year. I think Jerry Savelle. That was our lineup for Alumni Week meeting. Pretty good meeting. You know? Not bad. <clears throat> but as time came, it just got, it became not logistical or whatever to go back to Tulsa for the alumni week. So, I, you know, we'd read the word of faith, you know, and get the alumni pay, uh, newsletter that came out about once a quarter. And I'm a Raymond graduate, praise the Lord. But I'm in a church, this word of faith, and ended up becoming connected with Buddy. But the spirit in that church was different. And it wasn't because of Buddy. This, uh, he, they connected even after they already got to a certain size or whatever. And um, I remember my, uh, the pastor of that church telling me one time, you still preaching faith? Yeah. Hello? Well, you know, and, and it goes on to that. We've arrived. You know, we've got to go on past that. You know, got to grow and mature. And not. You'll always need to teach faith. People need to help, you know. Without it, it's impossible to please God. And like I've already said in this service, you cannot get it one time and you got it forever. So we'd have teachings in there about, you know, consider the ant. Now, I say that because the guy teaching it was unmarried, never been married, lived with his mama, and he was going to do teachings on basic youth conflicts. You're in your 40s, still live with your mama, never been married, and you're going to teach youth about all their basic youth conflicts. A little bit squirrely. And then it became more and more, you know, separating away from that, and becoming more uh, mature, you know, more, more revelation, all that stuff. We're deeper. Peter put them in remembrance. Paul put them in remembrance. He said not to let them slip. Amen. And so it became increasingly, the only time I could get really where I wanted, I needed to be around was when Buddy came. Kim Fagan's son-in-law, Buddy Harrison. When Buddy came, you know, he had the spirit of faith. Pat, Sister Pat would be with him most, a lot of the times. Holy Ghost woman. I mean, Holy Ghost. It's kind of interesting. I, I think, this is my personal opinion, Pastor Hagen got more of the ministry teaching, you know, laying hands on for the sick and uh, you know, preaching side, Pat, Sister Pat got the Holy Ghost side, flow of the Spirit. That's just my personal observation. Can't say that's definitive, but what I have seen, that's what I've seen. And um, it was stirring me up. Okay, Lord, but then the Lord told me to go back to my roots. Um, I felt like I was a little bit of a stranger when I did, because I hadn't been under that for a long time. But I can tell you, it started feeling like a breath of fresh air coming into my life. Because I was under that spirit of faith that the Lord set me under. <coughs> and I was catching it again. <coughs> amen. I said amen. Now, I, listen, again, this is not, the Kenneth E. Hagen is the only one on the planet who ever knew anything about faith. That's not true. I don't mean to even imply that in any way, shape, or form. But that is, the, that is the one that the Lord set me under to catch that spirit from. Okay? I can't forego that and then go sit in my life under non-Pentecostal, non-charismatic, non-baptized and Holy Ghost people all the time. Now, I can learn things from them. You understand? There are things they have insight on that will that'll be a blessing. But, man, they'll take the Holy Ghost. That, that will take the Holy Ghost side of you, right out of you. I don't know people that's left this church that don't even, it's almost like they, 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 they were never filled with the Spirit. They go to churches that, that aren't Spirit-filled. Hello? That doesn't mean there's people that are not saved. 
but they've left that behind. And that spirit, that presence of God, that anointing on their life that they were, they were supposed to help them maintain has been, is gone. Well, then what happens? You begin to do things you would have never done before. Would have never thought of. Amen. Because you've let it slip. Well, how are you going to get it back? Well, you're going to have to get back under people who will influence you. With faith. With the Holy Ghost. Amen? I feel like I'm a lecturer. That's okay. Because what we're doing right now in our services is we're laying a... Um, we are relaying the foundation. We are shoring it up. We're strengthening it. You get an old house, got, got run down, foundation's got whatever, you got to go in there and jack around it and pour new concrete in, put some rebar in there, sturdy it back up so you can refurb, re refurb the house. Amen? Not tear it all down, but get it back to where it's usable. God's doing some stuff in our services right now where he's gotten into that foundation and he's re-strengthening it and he's getting it ready because there's a bigger structure going on it. Amen. And he wants you to be able to handle it. So, um, get off my notes. What are you, what are you, it's an ant. No, there's a fly, there's a, some type of, maybe one of what they call flying ants. Okay. So, the most important part of maintaining your walk is to stay under the influence of the word. That includes submitting your life to a pastor who will feed you the uncompromised. Now, we're not talking about discipleship and all this stuff where you've got to come to him before you can go on vacation. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about you've got to get permission from the pastor to go to the bathroom. We're not talking about flaky stuff. But Peter wrote to the church and said, submit to those over you in the Lord. They may give an account of your soul, come on, with joy. With joy. Amen? Well, Lord, I mean, you know, they were in the church. You got anything else? Now, Lord, I'm just going <laughs> to, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> um. Stay committed to a good local church. Don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together, as is the manner of some. Being under the influence of the Word means you will have to make time to feed on the Word, read the Bible, read books uh, that will bring revelation, listen to teaching tapes, recorded teachings. The Word of God must take a high priority in our life if we are to maintain our faith walk. Obviously, faith is not something that you do once in your life and then go on to some higher order where you don't need these things anymore. We are to go from faith to faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, I'm kind of taking care of the very last one, but I will um, come back to it next week. We're going to pick up here next week. Hallelujah. Amen? I don't want you out driving out here when it gets dark because of the, um, we don't know what's, you know, you might run into an area where there's still a tree across the road or, you know, they were cleaning up. Like over here on Elm Eugene, if you went up there and turned left instead of going right to the interstate, they've got the brush that far over in the edge of the road. Well, you come there at night and not see that till the last second, you can tear your car up, cause you to have a wreck, whatever. I think, come on, guys, you could take it the chainsaw and go two more feet that way instead of stopping with it in the road. They do that stuff all the time. It's like they, they, some of them like take a plumb bob and it goes right down to the side of the road and they cut it. We ain't doing any more we got to do. We well, you know you make it a whole lot safer if you went back a little bit, just a little bit further. It ain't going to take that much. All right? So uh, let's receive our offering. If you're giving to PayPal or Cash App, you can take care of that. If you're using a, um, original monetary methods. There is a tithing and giving envelope on the seat backs in front of you. Now, Janice and Jerry, if you need one, just reach your hand back there and Ellie will slap it in your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Dear Father, we thank you for our time. Thank you for the offering. Thank you that people are blessed. We thank you they walk in the overabundance and overflowing blessings of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Now, and thank you for joining us. See you next time here at Expedition, Tri uh, Tri uh, Expedition of the Church of the Triad. Me stop. Back, back up. Thank you all for being with us. I want you to join us again next week here at Expedition Church. Until then, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Good night. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.